Greetings, friends. Welcome to Learning Never Stops by TutorOcean.com. Today's tutor is Melissa Gentle, a music teacher who specializes in singing, piano. She's an American expat living in Uganda. She shares the key to success in music. Hint, hire a fine tutor like Melissa. Why practice is so important in learning music. How music can help reflect what you feel. Common misconceptions about music and more. So please enjoy the show. Hello, Melissa. Thank you for coming to Learning Never Stops. Welcome to the show. You are a music teacher with 20 plus years of music experience, and you're offering your services on TutorOcean.com. And for the parents who are watching who may want to get music tutors for their kids, we've got some questions to ask. So we would really love to dive into some of those. Yeah, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. Why do you enjoy tutoring, Melissa? Most tutors probably say it's that aha moment, the moment where things really click in for a student. I would take it a step further and say the confidence boost that comes with that and just the process of getting to know themselves. Music has a way of doing that in particular. So I love that. Confidence. Yes, that's a big thing that parents like myself look forward to developing in my kids. So if music is a great way to do that, right? Definitely. Very good. Have you ever had a tutor before? Oh, definitely. I feel like most musicians will probably tell you, yes, that's how I got started. So I've studied music in particular in group settings as well as private. And I just really love the one-on-one, -on -one, the way you get to connect with a teacher. It suits my personality too. I really enjoy working one-on-one -on -one with students as well as receiving one-on-one -on -one training. Can't beat it. Yes, I remember my trumpet teacher. In fact, I see him through town and it's true. The personal, the relationship, it's so key, right? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Right? And what's that awesome song that's on ukulele? Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Oh, yes. Yeah. That was the first one I learned, of course. Very typical. It's a beautiful <laughs> one, yeah. Great. Yeah, ukulele, that's a great one and relatively accessible for parents, right? Because it's, well relatively cheap as far as instruments go, like not a brass instrument. And then mm -hmm. it's kid-sized, to be honest. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. A lot of my adult students, when it's their first time really getting to know a ukulele, they're like, but that's a kid's instrument, right? No, it's not, but it is very good for kids. And they do really enjoy it, typically. Awesome. So this one's a fun one. I've got a question. If you could do anything, Melissa, what would you do without, if you could do anything without failing, that's, that's, I'm, it's a fun question. I have a weird answer. Probably. I think I would be like an astronaut for a day. I always thought it would be cool to be in space, but there's that like underlying, what if astronauts <laughs> have to be really well physically trained? I don't think I would pass all those tests, but if I knew I could and things wouldn't go wrong, I would love to see like the earth in space. <laughs> that's completely unrelated. But I think that's the best answer I've ever heard. It's so true. <laughs> you can make, they say, at the Kennedy Space Station, you can make exactly zero mistakes in this job. Oh, okay, yeah, makes sense. So if you can't fail, then yeah, that's the job for you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you've written about this on our blog, but I wonder if you could talk about what is the key to success in more specifically music, learning music? Yeah, so I think I would say for learning music, it really simply has to just start with some level of interest. And I look at that, especially when it comes to children pursuing music lessons. I always ask the parent, who's whose idea was this? <laughs> because that's mm. a big predictor of whether the child's going to succeed. Of course, you can drum up interest, but still it's at the foundation. And it sounds really simple, but I feel like that's key. But then as far as like actually making music, I would say the number one key to success would be listen. That's not just listening to your tutor, but listening to what you're doing, listening to what's happening around you. So much of music is collaborative, of course. So it's really the key. Yes. Yes. That's so true. And who's, who came up with the idea? Is this mom's idea or is it the kid's idea? I, that's yeah, important. We, we can work with her, but it's mm. helpful to know going into it. That kind of covers what is the key to learning music. How about more more generally? Could you generalize that to learning anything? Just 
Yeah, I have to imagine so. I, I feel like my life has been geared so much towards music that I contextualize things a lot, but I have to imagine thinking of the few other things I've learned in life. Yeah, it always begins with interest. And then honestly, I've never, I was never interested in math in school and I just did not do very well at it. Conversely, yeah, I can see how that would be true. Very good. It's just having fun and feeling in control of what you're doing. You don't want to be forced to do ukulele <laughs> that would be a bit yeah bit silly definitely yeah. yeah and i can say of course teachers tried to get me to see how math is important in life and it's true but still there was something that was lacking there for me to go to the next level beyond just passing or that kind of thing and it's interesting that you chose music and it's been said to have many parallels with math it really does. It really does. I can't hide from it. Yeah, but that's probably just a personal issue <laughs> and a revulsion when it comes to math. But it's funny, a lot of musicians I meet feel the same way. And then you tell them, but there's math in there. So like, I don't want to hear about that part. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. But then from another perspective, for example, Ramanujan, who is one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, said that math was the way that he spoke to God. And that's how he mm. talked to God with these e equations. So it's like that interest is so key to it all, right? That fun yeah. aspect. Yeah, that's really beautiful. You're changing my perspective on math, Cameron. Good job. <laughs> I've got to. I'm a math major, so I have to. Oh. <laughs> Let's get to, you know, optimization in a sense. What can students do to maximize their learning? Any specific tips? Yes. And this is what I wrote about on the blog and what probably most musicians will tell you practice. It sounds so mundane. And I learned it in the lesson, picked it up right away. Why do I need to practice this? So many reasons. But I like to say that practice is where the progress happens. It's really not in the lesson. There's a little bit of practicing that happens in the lesson. And that ends up being where that progress is made. But that individual time where I'm not virtually breathing down your neck and you just have a space to figure it out and apply it to the different things. Yeah, it's super key. Practice. Yes. As with many things in life. For sure. And what experiences in life taught you these important lessons that, that you draw from? Yeah, I think, I think, of course, my own music training all the way through schooling, there was music training involved in some way, and also just different trials in life, I think, as well. And this is tangential, but like kind of the way that music helped me through those trials and then mm. getting to see, it's just, it's such a journey. Like music helps you discover things about yourself and then it can also help you with things. So I feel like, yeah, it's times like that where music is helping you through something and you're like, wow, I'm glad I practiced. It's like a weird connection to make, but yeah. And so many of those principles can just be applied to life and vice mm. versa. Taking voice lessons at one point I felt like I was going to see my therapist every week. <laughs> it was like you would get to know myself better mm. and unpack things and okay, maybe you're not reaching that note because you're actually this there's some self-confidence that's lacking mm. there. Well, why is it lacking? So everything's mm -hmm. just intertwined. Yeah. Yes. And it's interesting that a lot of these musicians sometimes they have music is like the positive source in their life. You mentioned Whitney Houston in mm. your blog post. And I wonder, is, is that something that she used to cope with the challenges in her life? It would definitely appear so. I don't know as much about her life, but the way she would emote on stage, that's coming from, I feel like all the greats, it's coming from an authentic place. There's something that's helping them through and the way that music is helping them in their lives. Like you just connect with it. Yes. And uh, suppose you are feeling sad, would you like sing a sad song or play a sad like tune on the piano is that yeah that's a good that's a good question it's like sometimes yeah you want to just feel what you're feeling and other times you're like no i want to get up and go i want to move out of this so it really depends as a parent to uh, four-year-old girls sometimes i think it helps to talk about the feelings that she's experiencing because when she's frustrated we'll say you're mm -hmm. frustrated aren't you and she'll say, yeah, as opposed to not expressing it makes it worse. Right. So if you had music, yeah, that would be such a positive thing. I've got some questions about your routines, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Do you have a particular morning routine that uh, helps you kickstart your day as a music musician and somebody who runs a mm -hmm. music center? Yeah, I think 
part of the reason I enjoy running a music center is because every day is different. But I do, I was trying to think through, there are a few things that are constant. I would say the normal, not so interesting stuff, of course, that I have to eat immediately. I'm always starving in the morning. And then after that, I do try to do some warm ups. It depends on maybe what the day holds. So of course, ideally, I would warm up everything before mm. I get into the day so that I'm ready. But physically with being a dancer, playing, as well as the voice, just like general warmups. Yeah, because of the fact that you never know what each day is going to hold. And then also just some time to maybe like meditate and just like mm. mentally get in a good headspace for the day. It's so hard to make music when you're like emotionally blocked. And that includes helping others make music. So just getting in a good headspace is like part of warming up, I feel. Very good. And I guess I would, this is a little bit, about your life experiences, but have, is there one thing that you can think of in your life, in your successful venture or your business that happened and you didn't expect it to happen? Yeah, I think I would say that this is very specific, but we moved recently, we moved to locations and we did that in the heat of COVID. And mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of People questioned that decision, but it really paid off. We moved to a larger location that has more spaces for doing a variety of activities. And yeah, I'm surely thankful that we took the plunge in a strange time. Yeah, I think it, it would have been very detrimental if we actually didn't do it at that time. So yeah, taking risks sometimes pays off. <laughs> very good. Yes. And I've got a question about your field of music. Is there common myth about being a musician or being a math or part of me a music tutor yes i think generally with music probably the top myth and i think i touched on this in the blog as well is that you're either born with it or you're not a very small percentage of the population is actually what you would clinically call tone deaf the vast majority of people can differentiate so that means you're capable you're capable of making music in some way. I related a lot to singing, but it goes for instruments as well. I've worked with people on a variety of ends of the spectrum. I've worked with a variety of ages, people who maybe thought they were too old to get started and learn something new, people who only had one functioning hand playing the piano. The possibilities are so broad. The limitations are mostly in our own mind. Yes, people can be born with an advantage, but that's not the end of the story. That's great. And I've got a question about your career right now. What's the biggest challenge that you are facing right now and how are you tackling it? Yes, that's a good one. I think presently I'm I and we are in a season of change. And so I am basically just fighting my own urge to manage it and try to direct it rather than just ride the wave and trust, trust the process. I think trusting the process is generally a challenge regardless of the season. So trusting the challenge. Wow. That's great. Thank you so much. And Melissa, you are based in Uganda. And yeah. what's it like living in Uganda? Because you were originally from the United States, right? Yeah, of course, changing cultures is no small challenge. But I love it. What's it like? Just completely different. <laughs> Just every I feel like my concept of what culture encompasses has broadened so much when you get to see oh that's actually a cultural difference this is a cultural difference so it's been really good like for my personal growth but Uganda is also amazing it's a beautiful tropical it's like a land of forever springtime and that's very much suits me so there are some things that it was like okay I have to I have to adapt but there are other things that I was like no this is where I was meant to be I love the warm weather I love the, the slower pace. People really take more time to just emphasize community and getting to know each other. And yeah, so I feel like those are two of the biggest, um, maybe defining things. I think Uganda was voted the like friendliest country or something like that recently. I forget which website that was. They're the most welcoming. So yeah, it's challenging, but it's also easy in some ways because of things like that. That's great. And when did you move to Uganda? 2014. Yeah. Seven years ago. Yeah. So eight years ago, if my math is correct. Yep. And you started running a music center, right? Yeah. Could you tell me a little bit about what, what's your goal with your music center? How is it going? 
Yeah. So I just, I don't know, it just came to me in 2015. I don't know, Austin say that. An idea just came to me. Stroke of lightning kind of thing. I don't know what happened. But yeah, I happen to be in, I don't know if I could say like a very musical town. You're like most people I meet are like, by the way, have you ever listened to my single? And they're like, this is just so obvious. You guys just need somewhere to congregate and do your thing. So I don't say it's going well. The community seems to be happy that we're here. And I think the overall vision is just to not only giving the community a space for self-expression, but allowing that self-expression to then, of course, overflow and impact the community in positive ways. Yeah. And to just be the center of excellence too, regardless of what it is. Like I just, I love diversity. So I guess it's no surprise I ended up in a completely different country, but I really, I just get excited when I see lots of different styles coming together, lots of different disciplines. And then just seeing what can come out of that. It's just not just the local community that it has the possibility of affecting, but the world at large, especially in our digital age. Yeah, that's the vision. Oh, great vision. I'm curious, what's the music culture like in Uganda? Can you compare and contrast that with music culture? Yeah, that's a great question. So you have, basically you have traditional music, but it's more like, of what think people probably think of when they conjure up ideas about what African music is and stuff like that. But then there's also modern music. I don't know if you or any viewers have heard of Afrobeat, but it's a style that's coming out of mostly Nigeria, but it's also in Uganda as well. And it's really lighting up the charts at the moment. So you have the ancient, really, because the traditional, of course, Uganda is an older country than the United States. So you have that ancient side, but you also have the modern, and then you have where they intermingle. So I feel like that's a, there's a difference there, not a bit I'm in America too, maybe as people mix some elements of classical and modern, but still when you think about that, it's okay. Classical and European, technically we have jazz, of course, but that's still within the 1900s. So just looking at the musical heritage, but at the end of the day, music is music. I feel like I say that all the time. So I think that's, of course, the commonality. I've shared songs that we've made at our, we have a recording studio in-house here, and I've shared them with friends in the U.S., and they're like, this is on my playlist now. I love this song. So there's, yeah, I do feel like in the U.S., it's, the U.S. is much bigger. Uganda is about the size of one state. So it's much easier to just go and trend and go viral here. So it's an interesting change going from the U.S. where you just, you can struggle for decades and nobody knows your name at the end of it. Whereas here you can chart by the end of the week. That's all there is to it. But that's just a little glimpse. Yeah, I I love that. Maybe you can uh, send me a Ugandan (laughs) mixtape and I can get some, get some Afro beats. Yeah. One universal truth. They make everybody dance. That's what I've seen. It doesn't matter who you are. There's so many videos on YouTube of people tearing it up to Afrobeat. <laughs> awesome. So it's a kind of happy music, right? Yeah, I would say yeah. so. Although there there have been some more minor chords, if that means mm. anything to, to anybody coming in the mm. recent years, that's added a little bit more depth to the music, which I've really loved. I've been relishing in that, actually. So Interesting. Yeah. So major is like happy and minor is sad is that yeah that's usually how i introduce the concept yeah but putting theory aside the feel of it you got it that's correct well what a great way to explain something that i never understood until now so thank you melissa you're a great music teacher (laughs) great and on tudor ocean you have listed the subjects that you teach and so you teach vocal piano and also ukulele. Yeah. Have you have you been enjoying teaching those those subjects on the platform? Yeah, definitely. I just it's always an interesting time to transition what you do in person to doing it online, and there are added advantages as well. So yeah, I enjoy it. Awesome. And I wonder if we can give some tips for the parents who may be listening or watching, if there's an instrument that they could go out and buy for their kid? Should they just go out and buy it? Or should there, what you were hinting at earlier, should it, the impetus come from the actual kid? So maybe there's a discussion to be had first before any purchases are made. Do you have any suggestion for that first instrument? 
Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, because insurance can also be expensive. You don't want to waste, <laughs> you don't waste your money on something your kid's not going to be interested in. What we like to do is, of course, different here because we're in person, but we'll often bring a, a child into our training room and have them just have a look at the instruments that are there and see where they gravitate. So I would say if a parent has an opportunity to do that, maybe churches are a great place to find instruments or a music store, of course, take the child in and let them shop around a bit. If like, maybe if your child is a bit older, actually my mom did this for me. I, she knew I wanted to major in music, but I only played drums at the time. And she said, if you want to really broaden things and get ready for what you're going to do, keyboard would be a good option. She had a little bit of musical knowledge, so she knew where to guide me. But if you, if it's just to get your child involved in music, I would say, yeah, it's a great idea to, if you're able, let them kind of shop around. If you already have a keyboard, like you remember those little toy keyboards for a five-year-old, you see them enjoying that, yeah, you might as well try out some lessons and see what happens. Very good. A keyboard, should they be weighted keyboards or it doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter? Yeah, that's... Yeah. Really good point. Weighted keys are always the better way to go. Mm. Of course, they're a little bit more expensive, just speaking practically about it, but they're really good for building finger strength. And especially when you're starting out, it's always a little bit disappointing if we have to start a child out on a keyboard because they'll get used to those lightweight keys and then later mm. probably struggle a bit and maybe even not want to play. And yet it's nice if you can play keyboard to also be able to play piano is a whole nother experience. And you'll be able to open up both worlds to your child if you're able to get the weighted keys and I keep more detail. Maybe you have an idea for, let's say a parent is listening and can you give them like one thing to do like right now with their kid that would be considered a musical practice or something to light, light the kindle the fire a bit? Yeah, I feel like the dawning the, of the Alexa has really helped with that. I think if you're not yet onto the conversation of what instrument might you like to try, maybe what style of music? catches your child's ear. If you have an Alexa, maybe just ask it to play some different styles of music, pop, classical, rock. And then oftentimes, of course, they gravitate, if they gravitate towards rock, maybe they're going to mm. want to learn a guitar at some point, things like that. So yeah, I would say exposure is really good, especially mm. when you don't need any musical knowledge for that. Yeah, because without exposure, they don't always know what they like. And so it's just also really, of course, really good for the brain. Even if you're not interested in having your child learn music, it's so good for every other subject. So exposing them to lots of different styles is a really good way to get things circulating. Right. So just having, spending an hour listening to different genres and dancing along, that's music practice? Yeah, for sure. Because you'd be surprised what kids can do, as we often are. You can find your child is actually playing along with the drum part at some point or like singing a little harmony and you're like, where did that just come from? And it just came from they're absorbing. It's like when you're learning a foreign language, that immersion style of learning music, it's possible in music as well, especially with younger kids. Good. And at what age do you think kids should be reading actual notes like on a paper do you think that could that could come later or should it be the first thing i don't really know what do you think yeah i think still if there are specific goals in mind i don't know i don't know where this would be the case that your five-year-old needs to be a classical pianist at some point then like sooner than later but what i tend to do is i like to mix playing by ear as well as sheet music and for younger kids actually having a book to focus on having something to look at is really helpful so oftentimes by the third lesson, even with as young as five, they're able to read sheet music. But I wouldn't say it's necessarily a hard and fast thing like they have to. There are some students I have who we don't ever venture into sheet music because they're so into pop and they have the ability to really do something with their pop playing. Yeah. Some of them, we, I, I like to try to encourage them to try it out at some point, just so that they have the option to read sheet music, but it's really so individual. Mm -hmm. If a child comes to me already having some knowledge, that's another thing too. If they were solely playing by ear, maybe later we'll sprinkle in some sheet music, those kinds of things. Very interesting. And I wonder why in pop, they generally don't read sheet music, but in the orchestra, they're all flipping the pages and so on. Is there something I'm missing? Is pop just simpler or? I think to 
some degree without making anybody angry, I would say yes. The chords, the chord structure of the music is easier to figure out by ear. Inevitably, you'll miss some details if you're trying to figure out classical by ear. It's a much steeper hill to climb. But also the basis of today's music is improvisation. Don't we get excited when we hear a song on the radio, but then hear the live version and it's almost completely different, or it seems like it is on the surface. That's exciting. We want that. But you're not really going to do that so much with a Beethoven symphony. Like there's less room for improvisation because they spelled out every detail. Mm. But pop, you're actually doing yourself a disservice if you try to do it from sheet music. You're missing a lot. Like jazz, they just make it up. They go off of the feeling of the other guy that they're playing with. That's a big leap going actually from. So there's a leap in both ways. There's a leap from mm -hmm. to reading and there's a leap for to not reading. It's kind yeah, of funny. for sure. And both like I've seen classical musicians who are just phenomenal when they first try out pop. There's a little bit of a learning curve and then vice versa. So that's why I won't go as far as to say like one musician is more talented than the other. But the simplicity of the chord structure, is there is a difference there. Very good. And I guess I have a question. I, I am an adult and let's suppose I want to learn ukulele. How shall I start? Should I just book a session with you and bring a ukulele and you'll help me to tune it and everything and we'll get started? Yeah, I think that can be how it happens. I know a lot of people get eager and they maybe go to YouTube first before a first session. That's also okay. And then also, if you maybe wanted to learn more about how I do my sessions, I have the free 15 minute initial booking to just introduce you. But there's, yeah, there's aside from having the instrument, there's not a ton of prep that you really have to do. Yeah, it's like just coming ready to learn. And I suppose voice is even simpler to get started, you just have to bring your voice, maybe a glass of water and a computer. Exactly. Don't be sick and you're ready to go. Awesome. And what are some benefits of taking a musical practice? Like for myself, like I'm always trying to, I'm working on my personal development. It means generally getting a little better at things, developing skills, getting a little smarter. And how would music benefit me, generally speaking? Yeah. So there's so many aspects of it. Of course, when you have an outlet for self-expression, but also maybe it's like sounds good to you that's really helpful for processing things there's also the aspect of i think focus is something that's more and more perhaps an issue in our society where things change so fast so having to sit down and focus on something for an extended period of time it's really good for the brain yeah you use both sides of your brain especially when you play like piano and I think a lot of us know the benefits of that and of course there's been so many studies showing like maybe if someone has dementia in older age yet they still remember songs that they learned as a child there's there is a part of the brain that gets tapped into that we don't always engage just on a regular basis so it's great for brain health, staying sharp, physical coordination. Yeah. Like I said, getting to know yourself better. Music has a way of doing that. Yeah. So many things. And I think voice in particular, I would say mirrors a lot with maybe if someone is spiritual, they'll notice like there's a lot of parallels between their vocal journey and their spiritual journey. So that's something that's available as well. If that's something that interests someone. That's great. And also, there's potentially a career in there. So one could actually be a musician. And yeah. you can speak a little bit since you've been doing this for 20 plus years, you've performing. And what is it like to be a musician? What's I always wondered, what's it like to be the life of the party when you know everything's happening and musicians up there, people are clapping? How does that feel like? Yeah. And it's so funny that you use the phrase life of the party because I am by nature an introvert. And people often tell me, but I can't tell because you get up in front of hundreds of people and just do what you got to do and enjoy it. And I do enjoy it. It's really fun when you feel the audience coming into the music with you, like whether they're singing along or dancing, or you can tell you just touched on someone's all time favorite song. Maybe if you're doing a cover or a song that you wrote and it speaks to someone in the way that you actually hoped it would, it's, it's one of a kind. And it's something that you think of music as a career and one day you retire from a career. It's not something I'm ever going to stop doing. I'll be singing for my cats when I'm old, if nobody else wants to hear it. It's, 
and it's not, it's really just about that community that gets formed in that moment. That's the biggest thrill for me. And it's that quote that you said about math earlier. I'd never thought about math being spiritual in any way, but I definitely, music is that for me. You can replace the word math with music in that. So it's also, yeah, it's something that just feeds my soul. And yeah, that's regardless of whether anyone is up in the room with me. That's great. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been very enlightening and you've inspired me to pick up my instruments, dust them off and actually get a tutor of quality from the, from the platform tutorocean.com. And yeah, and all of those benefits, why not? And like you said, it's a way to cope with stress a positive thing doesn't hurt anybody why not yeah. right yeah and awesome i really appreciate you taking the time to to be interviewed on learning never stops the show that you know where tutors and students are going to get to know each other and i think this is going to be great i think is going to bring in some some new students for you because they're going to just see who you are now and really connect with you now so i really appreciate it yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this interview with Melissa, the music tutor. She is available to help you or your kid learn piano, singing, dancing, or ukulele. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It will help us out and we'll make more content to deliver to you. Thank you and have a great day. Cameron, over and out.